Hey everyone, welcome to the AI Builder series where we interview innovators building AI powered applications in Snowflake. Today, I am joined by uh, Sarah Naji, co founder and CEO at Seek.ai. Sarah, welcome. We'd love for you to do a quick introduction of yourself, a little bit of your journey of how you ended up becoming the co founder of CKI, and then, of course, uh, what does CKI do and how does it help customers uh, solve their problems? Yeah, so I like to kind of start with my own background because it leads into the origin story of Seek and why I founded the company. So I actually came from a data background myself. Um, I worked as a data scientist for over a decade. I actually started out in the astrophysics world, um, working with data from the Hubble Space Telescope, and then kind of got into quantitative finance early on because it actually used a lot of the same math as a uh, the astrophysics world. But then I got really interested in data science and even data analysis. So ended up becoming more of a data scientist in financial services for the rest of my career. Uh, during that time, I actually was a Snowflake customer at a couple different places. Um, and so the pain point that I just kept experiencing pretty much everywhere I worked was I wanted to be doing just deep research on the data. Like, that's what I was used to. That's why I got into the space, because of all the cool data that I could play around with and ideally find insights that were really valuable and in my world, you know, could make money for the business in the form of profitable investments. Um, and instead, what just kept happening was the non-technical people needed a lot of help, too, with the data. So they would keep coming up to me because the tools they had just weren't serving all their needs. And they'd be asking me questions just most of the day. So, you know, I really was not expecting to have to be going into the data, writing a bunch of code, often very manual, repetitive code over and over again for these non-technical colleagues. And so around 2020, that's when I came across large language models that could write code pretty well. Um, and it was actually a really big step up from previous large language models. Like I had been following the space since 2018. And so the thing that really struck me was you can ask these models questions, which non-technical people are really good at. And on the back end, they can write a lot of the same code that I was writing that I really didn't want to be writing. So uh, basically 2021, ended up quitting my job, did a really deep dive into large language models, like essentially bet my career on them. And then later that year, 2021, is when I founded Seek. And so what we do is we build a natural language interface that anyone in a business can use to just ask those same questions that you want to ask the data team. But instead of waiting two weeks, four weeks for an answer, you can actually get a lot of the answers back in real time. And that means you can ask more questions. So one of the biggest things we hear from our customers is, you know, I have questions I've been wanting to ask for like, years, potentially. And I always had higher priority questions I needed to ask the data team, so I couldn't bother them with all my questions. Um, and so we allow you know all these questions to get asked and therefore more ROI from that data. So what I really like about your story is how there was that personal experience, right, that pain point that you were feeling. Then at the same time, you see this wave of large language models, the things that we didn't think were capable of like machine learning and algorithms doing before and you come together and start building CKI. How did you start prioritizing? What was like the first thing uh, that you guys wanted to build as you were seeing those two trends uh, coming into CKI? You know, the main languages that I was coding in were SQL and Python. And so kind of choosing what is the language that we want to start with, I chose SQL because, you know, that was often, to be honest, the most repetitive language. Like for me personally, it was a lot easier to write but you know, also just a lot more repetitive and you know, in some ways um, just a lot less you know, kind of stimulating than Python. So I, I figured this is probably going to be easier for an AI to automate than Python initially. So that was kind of our choice to begin uh, with SQL. Um, in 2023, you know, we get achieved our goal of building the world's best natural language to SQL model. Um, if you look at the Spider data set, which is kind of the most widely known academic benchmark on text to SQL, 
our model mini seek is actually at the top of the leaderboard. It's the only model above 90% accuracy. First model to break that milestone. So yeah, uh, we started out with SQL. You know, we hit our goal of doing that really, really well in 2023. So now 2024, um, we are starting to expand into other languages like Python. Um, and it's also a really big goal for us to also just do whatever we can to make the dialogue uh, better and better as well. I really like everything you're saying, so I kind of want to see how does it actually work. And I'm kind of excited to see how you guys are solving for a big problem in LMs, which is hallucination. Mm -hmm. And how do you get those business users to trust the results of this like LLM-generated SQL? Uh, we should take a look at your demo. All right, sounds good. So yeah, going into the demo, what we're showing is actually a few different user interfaces. We have the business user interface. This is a product manager named Nick who really has no idea what's going on in the data. He's always asking the data team. We also have uh, two other interfaces. We have the admin view. Um, as you can see, it's connected to Snowflake. Pretty soon, we're going to have the SPCS URL and that deployment, which I'm really excited about. And we also have a data analyst view. This is someone named Sarah, named after me. And this is really something I would have wanted in my job. And so I'm going to show how all the different roles work together to speed up these data workflows. So the first thing I'm going to do is just type brands to see what are existing questions that Seek can suggest. And I can just click on one and right away just be able to see it. So this can be really useful just to have all of the data in one place. If you have like a thousand employees, a hundred thousand employees, you probably don't want people just asking the same questions to the same data team and having that same work being done by multiple people. So having everything in one place prevents the same questions from getting asked twice. But the really interesting piece is when you have new questions. So I'm going to ask, show me all consumer brands and their average rating and hit enter. And so what Seek is now going to do is it's actually going to go through all the data in the warehouse. Doesn't matter if you have you know, hundreds of thousands of tables, for example, Seek is gonna choose the right warehouse to query, the right schema, the right tables. And from there, it's actually going to piece together the SQL query. And you know, from there, it's going to actually run a confidence threshold to be able to determine if it's highly confident in the answer or if it needs to send the answer to a data analyst. In this case, Seek was highly confident in the answer. So you can actually see this blue shield here that says verified by Seek. Um, you also get this nice uh, write up here about what's going on in the data. But you know, I might have another question. So let's say I wanna know the week over week growth of the most highly rated Samsung brands, for example. I'm not really seeing it coming up, so I'm just going to hit enter. And again, uh, what Seek is going to do is, you know, it is going to use the previous context of the chat potentially to inform the question, but it's also going to continue to go through all of the data, find the right data to query, choose the, the columns, um, and finally produce the query. It might also be a good time to talk about the underlying model, Seeker 1. Seeker 1 is actually state of the art. We submitted a smaller version called MiniSeq to the Spider text to SQL leaderboard, and it was actually the first model ever to break 90% accuracy. And to this day, it remains the number one most accurate model. So, just talking about hallucination protection, you know, guardrails so that business users never get bad data, just having the most accurate model doesn't really hurt either. Okay, so Seek is now telling me that it's pinging the data analyst. And what that means is it's not as confident about the answer. So we want someone on the data team to basically be able to look at it and give it their approval. So this is where I'm gonna go into the Sarah uh, persona. As I can see, I got a notification here. And when I click on it, it's actually gonna take me into the same chat as Nick. So this is what we call multiplayer mode, which is kind of cool to have multiple people and the AI all in one chat. And so going into this insight, 
we actually have a full-fledged SQL editor that you can use to more rapidly go through the code and essentially be able to teach Seek if anything needs to be changed, what exactly it is that needs to be changed. Something we hear a lot is, can Seek handle complex data or complex queries? Looking at this query, Seek is actually doing some fairly sophisticated stuff. It's using the over function, it's using lag. So, you know, it is doing, you know, fairly advanced functions here. And as we can see, we have the results here in this table. We can also get a closer look here. And something that's kind of cool is if you do want to change something, like maybe I don't need, you know, average rating or brand name in the query, I can actually just ask Seek to clean it up a little bit, you know, remove brand name and average uh, rating. And so you can actually work with the SQL chat to be able to have it just rewrite the SQL for you if anything needs to be changed. While Seek is doing this, we also have a pretty cool feature called the Data Explorer. You know, you can actually take a look at what's going on in the data to get a better view and see the full schema tree um, as well. And then you can also see it here on the side. We also have a pretty cool regenerate button if you want to choose different um, schema and tables to query. And so here we've actually gotten the modified code from Seek. You can be able to copy the code and paste it in if you want to be able to do that. I'll give it a run here. Looks like it was able to clean up those columns. So I'm going to hit verify. And then going back to the business user chat with Nick, now we can actually see that the answer has that blue shield. And so it's been verified by the data team. So from Nick's perspective, this non-technical user, all he ever gets back is good data. So he can trust that whether it's the AI or it's going through the human in the loop process, um, he's always getting results that he can trust. Thanks for showing me that demo. And it was cool to see sort of that experience and collaboration that doesn't go away just because now we have LLMs in the picture, right? It's like, just because we have LLMs doesn't mean we completely get rid of analysts uh, that can help us continue building that trust with the data. And so one of the things you did mention is, right, CKI, it's running, it's a full-fledged application that is not running in Snowflake today, but you do see a future uh, for that via containers and the native app framework. Tell me a little bit more as to why is that's an exciting moment for you guys, especially with the type of customers uh, and the type of challenges those customers uh, are seeing today. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I personally used to be a Snowflake user and customer at other places I worked. So when I was starting Seek and we were trying to figure out, okay, what's the first um, data warehouse that we connect with? Snowflake was really the first company I sought out to do a partnership with. Um, so we were actually an SPCS partner very early on, um, even since April 2023. And we were mentioned uh, in you know the keynote in the summit last year. And we just kept working really hard to push the limits of what's possible with SPCS um, and native apps. So um, we actually have uh, several large enterprises in the Fortune 500 working on joint pilots with Seek and SPCS. And we're really excited um, to start proving out the value um, of just the security gains that you can get from SPS, SPCS as an enterprise. It's going to save a lot of information security work and procurement work for these customers. Um, as a startup founder, I personally appreciate not having a sales cycle that lasts years. Um, you know, being able to get that speed up from working with SPCS. So we're really excited about it, and we're going to have a lot of really exciting announcements to come. Yeah, no, I'm excited about your guys' journey with Snowpark Container Services. You guys were early on on this journey. Uh, you've seen the trends of LLMs. Now you're seeing the trends of bringing apps uh, to the Snowflake Data Cloud, and so we're really excited. Uh, if anybody wants to learn more about CKI, where should they go or learn more information uh, to get started? Pretty easy. It's just seek, S-E-E-K, dot A-I. Yeah, pretty simple. So, Sarah, thanks for coming today. It was a pleasure to have you and share more about CKI uh, and how you guys are building AI applications that run inside Snowflake. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much again. And of course, thanks to everyone that joined us on this episode, where you can learn more about AI builders building really impressive applications that can run inside the Snowflake Data Cloud. 
If you want to see more of these stories, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more uh, AI Builder interviews. Till the next one.